I'm Alan Partridge. Aha! Question from the person over there. Has your career gone off the rails a bit? Uh, no, not you. The... <laughs> Are you in favour of the death penalty? Yes, I am. Uh, for treason and murder. Monday at 10 on BBC Two. Have you got your own tool bag? Yes. Is it a great big bulging one? <laughs> Fancy. It's June in and out of June, tomorrow, 9.30 on BBC Two. First on BBC One, it's Lily, the workaholic. Here. See Jason Connor, his wife's had a little baby. Oh, doesn't he look lovely with a bit of stubble? No, Jason Connery. <laughs> Tell you what, I wouldn't mind to ape of the wallop with him on a dark night. <laughs> God, we'd have lovely babies. Look, Mother, will you forget about Jason Connery? They're all waiting for you on the set. Let them wait. You're not getting broody, are you? You're a bit long on the tooth for all that kind of caper. <laughs> are you sure you're all right? Have you had a flush? What do you think I am, a lab? <laughs> I just think you're working too hard, ma'am. Exactly. That's why I'm not going out there to rehearse Madam Bloody Butterfly. I've told that director twice, I'm not doing it. I am not wearing a black wig. End of story. You've got to, haven't you? Madam Butterfly was Japanese. So, haven't the Japanese ever heard of peroxide? <laughs> You've gone to a lot of trouble, you know. They've even got this dead serious actor to play Butterfly's fella. He's from the National. Front or trust? <laughs> Have you got your patch on? Listen, if I'm too old to have a bit of bloomer work with Jason Connery, then I'm damn sure I'm too old to play a 14-year-old geisha girl who's going to commit origami because she's up the duff to a Yankee sailor. <laughs> I'm not doing no Madden Butter play. You can tell that director, Slinger Zoo. I didn't come here to do opera. Go on, sling it out. Sick to death of this. Oh, oh, Jason, take me away from all this. <laughs> <laughs> Keep still, honey. I don't know. Ten years of marriage and you still can't tie your own bow tie. Man. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I don't know where I'd be without you. Heck, I'm a lucky guy. Nine beautiful children. <laughs> and the most talented, beautiful wife. I'm the luckiest man in the world. Oh, shush, honey. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Come on, ask the 29 million people who watch our show every week. <laughs> oh, the nation's sweetheart. Oh, Jason. Oh. Excuse me, my lady. Can I just say how very wonderful you look tonight, Lady Connery? You may, Janet. I know I'm a worthless old bag, tired and worn, grateful to be in your service, but could you possibly spare a few coppers? I haven't eaten for three days. Then you must force yourself, Janet. We do not want you to become an anorexic, do we? Thank you, lady. Janet. Oh, ready, honey? There's our cue. Oh. Ready. Chuck us, darling. <laughs> And don't forget, leave all the difficult moves to me. We've got Junior to think of now. Mm -hmm. Jason. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Showbiz themselves, Jason and Lily Connery. gentlemen and welcome to tonight's show my name is Jason Connery thank you you're so nice. and now I'd like to introduce you to the little woman the girl next door my beautiful wife Lily say hello honey hello everyone and thank you how are you honey did you have a good day not bad I played a little golf and Practice my stroke. Hmm. And how is your golf? <laughs> and how was your day? Oh, nice, you know. I uh, tidied the house. Which one? We have 15. <laughs> <laughs> the London one, silly. And then I baked the cake and ran up some curtains. Honey, I keep telling you, you'll break the windows. <laughs> Why can't you run around the park like everyone else? <laughs> silly. <laughs> 
I have the most incredible wife, folks. She has given me nine of the most beautiful children. And she still looks as young as the day I married her. How do you do it, honey? Well, I don't smoke and I don't drink. I take regular exercise and lots and lots of fresh air. I only eat organic vegetables. I have my career, my charity work. My wife won the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and I have my wonderful family. That's my secret, folks. And I've got another little secret to tell you. There's another Connery on the way! Ten kids, it looked great on the Christmas special. <laughs> My wife spoils me. Every time we have a baby, she knits me a sweater. Hello, oh, honey. No more presents. I mean, what do you give a guy with ten children? A vasectomy? <laughs> you oh, I'm only kidding. Through thick and through thin. All out or all in. And whether it's win, place or show. With you for me and me for you. We'll muddle through whatever we do together. Jason, Tam, Here, you! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! up. <laughs> <laughs> What's you doing in here? Trying to wake you up. Come on, move your ass, move your ass. You've got a show to do out of here. Let us do this. <laughs> what a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Miss Lily Savage. That you do. Well, you can cry me a river, cry me a river. I can't be singing this maudlin shit. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, fellas, I got two maudlin, two maudlin. Pack it up. You still get your money, don't worry. <laughs> I've got the ump. I have. I've just woke up. You know, when you have a little kip in the afternoon, it's fatal, isn't it? Isn't it though? Because you wake up like the wrath of God. <laughs> I woke up like that girl and the exorcist, my head was spinning. <laughs> Your mother knit socks in hell. <laughs> and she was woken up by Janet Street Porter, and that's enough to have anyone reaching for the early water, isn't it? Because <laughs> I was lying there and I was having this lovely dream about Jason Connery. I don't know about you, but please, smear me in custard jelly and sponge fingers and tripe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what he's got, Jason? He's got something. He's got that quality that has women's drawers flying down their legs after <laughs> half an hour of meeting. <laughs> and it's not good looks. It's not a Platinum American Express card. Although that does tip the scales in his favour. I've got to be honest, the <laughs> box always helpful, isn't it? Well, who wants to go out with a pauper, for God's sake? How far can you go on a gyro? Not very far. <laughs> I'll tell you what this quality is, and you'll agree with me. He's got charm. Isn't that right? Charm. Gets you anywhere, doesn't it? Charm. So, Tony Blair's got charm. He has. That's a charming man. I wouldn't mind a little. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't like, because he's married. I don't touch married men. Don't like bisexuals either. No. You never know whether to push or pull. <laughs> <laughs> Now, charm, that's what's missing in this world now, a bit of charm. I mean, if you went for a nice house with Jason Connery, you wouldn't be queuing for the night bus at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you wouldn't be standing in a kebab shop either with a gang of drunks. <laughs> and neither would you be in a bus stop being fumbled with <laughs> by a drunken naff <laughs> who's just eaten chips and gravy in a polystyrene carton without a fork. <laughs> 
man is trying to whop his hand up your skirt. You'd have none of that with Jason, <laughs> would you? <laughs> no, would you be dragged in a rough pub and sat there after hours for a bevy? Do you know what the saddest thing in the world is? Going in a rough pub and looking round and realising you're the roughest thing in there. <laughs> The age of chivalry is dead now. It's finished. I mean, I blame Erica Jong and the other one, Jermaine Greer, for all this. But, I mean, fellas are scared of women now, aren't they? They are. I mean, fellas don't open the door anymore for women, do they? They're scared of being called a sexist pick. They are. I've had fellas let the door go, smack me straight in the gob. <laughs> <laughs> fellas don't stand up for you now, and buses do they? It's only women who stand up for women. Pregnant women especially. I've been stood on a packed 88 bus, and I've had a carrier bag with £10 of King Edwards in it. Stood there, nobody stood up, so I've shoved it up my jumper. <laughs> I've looked eight months pregnant, you know, I've stood there. Well, I've looked a bit lumpy, actually. You know, with the <laughs> like I was giving birth to a litter of turtles, you know. Well, <laughs> nothing, they've ignored me. So I've lay in the aisle screaming, Oh, my waters are bust. Oh, <laughs> nothing. I've given birth to a King Edward. Nothing, they haven't flinched. <laughs> and this business in restaurants now, that women should pay their own way or go Dutch if you're out with a male date because it shows your independence. Who thought that one up? <laughs> I'll tell you who thought it up. A fella. That's who thought it up. <laughs> if I'm sat in La Ponte La Tour with a punter, and by punter, I mean a business, business executive from the BBC, and the bill's 200 quid, I am sat on my purse and I'm not budging, and that's because <laughs> with nobody. Of course it's fellas thought it up. You can hear them now going, oh, oh when I with this bird last night, mm, she paid for the lot, and then oh, I've got tits out of <laughs> But it's this new breed, isn't it? <laughs> the fellas now, they're called lads. I know what I'd call them. <laughs> Gobshites. <laughs> Can you say that on the BBC, Janet? And I? I don't know why I'm asking Janet Street Porter, because she'd have me effing and blinding to get me sacked. <laughs> you know, I'm at a very strange age, I'll be honest with you. I'm sort of, you know, my biological clock is ticking fast. I can hear it in the night. And... <laughs> it's like being in bed with Skippy. <laughs> I'm starting to get forgetful. Like, this afternoon, I thought, I, I jumped in a taxi, you know, coming to work, and I thought, I thought, I forgot the casserole. Because I put a casserole in the oven on a low light. No, because you can't eat the muck they sell in here, for God's sake. <laughs> the canteen, I had shepherd's pie. The foo, that's aptly named. It looks like something you'd find in the middle of a field full of sheep. <laughs> Disgusting. So I thought, I'll ring our beard up and I'll get it to put the casserole on a low light. So I rooted my bag in the taxi, right? To get my mobile phone out of my bag. And this is what I produced. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of them things to operate your telly with. Which worries me, because I'll be sat at home now with my mobile. <laughs> trying to turn the telly over. <laughs> and we've got two satellite dishes and 49 channels. She'll be like this. My phone bill's going to be about 3,000 quid. <laughs> I'd say it was cloned to Heathrow and hope for the best. <laughs> now, I think I need a bit of romance, mate, in my life. I don't mean it's hard sex. You know, I mean a bit of, like, Court and Pizza Hut and the pictures and chocolates <laughs> and Astish Bumanti and Blue Nun and a little fumble on the couch. You know, that kind of romance. <laughs> I mean, even Arvid has got a boyfriend. It's not fair. On Archie, his name is. She messed him with scratch cards anonymous about two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, he is. 42 and still a virgin. Arvid is the only real girlfriend he's ever had. All the others he had to blow up first with a foot pump. <laughs> At least Arvida don't go <laughs> on top of the wardrobe if he bites it too hard, does he? <laughs> well, now I'd like to show you the second part of uh, my Avengers series. Because what happens? You know they're making a film of the Avengers. Do you know they're making a film of the Avengers? Well, I went up for it, you know, because I thought if anybody's ideal to play an Avenger girl, it's me. <laughs> so, well, it's true. I look fab. Well, I put the leather cat suit on and I said to Arvida, what do you think? She said I look like a skid mark on a hotel towel. <laughs> <laughs>
Soon you will feel the pinch, pinch, pinch of the electro-nipple claps. And all that voltage, all that pain. Are you ready, Joyce? With his trusty bowler, he felled Goliath. <laughs> then he did the same to Mad Max too. It's all right, Mrs. Peel. We'll have you out of here in a jiffy. What do you think you're doing? I'm tired. It's Thursday. It's me fetish club night. I come every week. Oh, look what you've done. I'm going to lose my membership over this. Send. Send there. Adeld and Joyce have had an accident. Oh, you know how hard it is to get staff these days. <laughs> and you, you've come on the wrong night. Potty training's on Tuesday. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. <laughs> Mrs. Peel! Oh, no, 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 I'm not getting caught like that again, Mrs. Peel. <laughs> I've got it. Fetish Club meets train spotters. <laughs> How very inventive. Well? Tally ho, my dear. I shall leave you to have your fun. <laughs> Mrs. P. King. <laughs> Mother sent me. I'm your new assistant. Care for a bevy? Rather. <laughs> so tell me, my dear Tara, what made you join the service? I enjoy being tied up. <laughs> what are you glad in this game? I'm fighting. Right. Fancy a shag? <laughs> I want to tell you why I use New Colour by L'Oreal. <laughs> Look at my hair. You'd never know I had a colour on. Thanks to colour, my hair's alive. Literally. <laughs> Here's the scientific bit. You see, colour strips away the pigments in the hair and replaces it with 100% acrylic. <laughs> Look, beautiful nylon strands. <laughs> Total protection. I can't feel the rain. I can't feel the wind. <laughs> I can't feel my scalp. <laughs> New colour by Lorry Oil. No one will ever know it's not real. And why do I use it? Because I deserve it. <laughs> well, you know, I think that went rather well. I'm going to go have a cup of tea in my dressing room. Okay, see you. See you later. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Yeah, what's he like? Dale. Uh -huh. He's fabulous. You know, he'd do anything for you. Mm, would he now? I know what you're thinking. Of course you do, it's your job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fly, yeah, you wouldn't, um, have... What, read your poem? Oh, please, yeah. Well, I'll have a look for you. Go on, what do you say? Go Goodness on. me. Well, you were born under the sign of Gemini. Aye, oh, that's me. A lion, two-faced, promiscuous, schizophrenic who loves to shop. Never mind, not going there. Can you see any money? I can see, yes, there will be a change in your oh. fortunes, but beware of making any rash decision. And do think before you speak. Don't you worry, love. When I've got 14 million smackaroonies in the back of my handbag, there'll be no need for speech. It'll be... And those millions will come running. Now, what do I owe you, love? Oh, nothing, nothing. No, Meg, I no, insist. No, no, nothing. seriously, you've... To... Yeah, there's ten bob. Oh, Get thanks. yourself a bevy. Thanks very much. <laughs> Uh, come in if you're pretty. <laughs> oh, Lily, how lovely to see you. Come in, darling. Sit down. Dale, I'll come straight to the point. I want you to do me a small favour. Oh, just ask. It's yours. I want you to fix the lottery for me. What? <laughs> oh, go on, I'll slip you a few, Bob. I'll cut you in. No, no, no. It is impossible. 
Oh, well, thanks very much, Dale. I'm stuck in a job that's killing me. I'm working morning, noon and night. Me nerves are hanging out. I'm that far from suicide. And I've got to work. I'm the only breadwinner in our house. It's killing me. I've got no life. How can you say such a thing, Lily? Show business is your life. Fuck <laughs> it off, Norman. I'm sick of it. The pressure, the sheer volume of work. Writing, performing, singing, dancing, playing the bugle. You play the bugle? <laughs> oh, not many. <laughs> See? Talent. It's a gift. It's also a curse. I mean, it's all right for you. You just have to turn up, read the auto cue, and grin. I mean, anyone could do it. Now, you know, I, you know, like, like you, do, you do it very well. You know, reading. <laughs> Listen, I really can't stand around listening to this any longer. I've got to get to the studio. Dale, please, please, just a little lottery win, please. A couple of million quid, and I'll be able to stay at home with the kids. Please, Dale, I can relax, enjoy myself. I'll do things for charity. I'll buy a sunshine coach. Please, Dale. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at my poor old kipper. My God, Savage, you used to look like Kim Novak. Now look at you. You're a cross between Jimmy Nail and Barbara Cartland. <laughs> old with overwork. Another sacrifice on the altar of life's entertainment. And to think that that poor face was once on the back of every single can of Jorah glit in the British Isles. <laughs> I can remember it like it was yesterday. Two. A baby, two years of age, stood there on the Lido at New Brighton Baths in my little white swimsuit and my stilettos with a little sash. Little Miss Joraglit. Oh, my God, it would break your heart. Mind you, I only got the job because I was the only baby who could suck the wadding without flinching. <laughs> well, Savage, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. And you're going to win that lottery. And for 14 million quid, you're quite prepared to sacrifice your body. Get it? Let's face it, you'd sacrifice it for five quid. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, I wouldn't, you trollop. Oh, God, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Good heavens. Don't be frightened, Dale. Slip that lock on and get your kit off. <laughs> if I've been with a woman, Dale, I mean a real woman. <laughs> I didn't think so. Mm. Or just look at me as a giant Fisher Price play and lane centre. <laughs> Put all the knobs and dials you like. Go on, help yourself. I love you. Come on, you. Ah! You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Friday, Mr. Winter, like that. Get <laughs> some clothes on. Hi, gorgeous. It's Dale Winton. No, too Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Hey, 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 what are you doing? You can't come in here. Shut it, you. All clear, Flanny. Our mate wants a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Winton. You can do what you like, but don't touch the face. My mother came to you for help. Your mother? You mean your Lily's daughter? Yeah, that's right. And you turned her down. Yeah, but... It's an impossible request. Well, maybe these will change your mind. What have you got there? Mm. Photos. Incriminating photos of you in Tenerife. So if you don't want your bare ass plastered oh. all over the news of the world, <laughs> I suggest you get out there and pick my mother's balls. You're mad. You're mad. You're mad. <laughs> well. Sorted. Results. The winning numbers for tonight's jackpot of 14 million pounds are 2, 8, 17, 14, 42, and the bonus ball 23. Ah! Ah! I've won! I've won! 14 million macaronis! I'm a millionaire! I'm a winner! Ah! Listen here while I tell you a tale A story of wags to witches Six little numbers changed a girl's life And now she's joined the witch of witches <laughs> From a life in the gutter One tiny flutter Gave this caterpillar a chance 
Then a voice from the sky awoke this butterfly. Now they all want to get in her pants. <laughs> no chance. Because <laughs> I'm Lottery Lily, the queen of the winners. Eye of the needle, I join the sinners. Lottery Lily, the richest girl in town. My gyros have stopped, it's slavery and drudgery. I've run out of trill, I can't feed the budgery. I'm lighting candles, they turned off the gas. Will it change your life? Uh, you bet your ass. <laughs> Cause I'm Lottery Lily, queen of the winners. I have a needle, I've joined the sinners. Lottery Lily, the richest. Galentine. A Hong Kong jam, I'll paint the town red. The lights of Las Vegas. Now it's bacon at <laughs> Lottery Lily, the richest girl in town. Queen of the bookies, there's no slicker queen. And I owe my looks to sex, booze, and nicotine. Richard and Judy. Call me Lady Luck, but don't give me daggers, cause I don't give a scratch call. <laughs> I've come to give notice. I don't need the job because I've won the lottery, so you can stick it and put me P45 in the post. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> get that backpack, girl. We're getting out of here. Oh, Mum. Come on, we're going shopping. Mum. What? Listen. And tonight's lottery was won by a record five and a half million people. <laughs> the jackpot of over 14 million pounds was won by five and a half million people, which works out at £2.54 each. Please, <laughs> <laughs> Mr Yentop, I was only messing. I'll stay at Can I job back, please? I'll do anything. Here my shoes. I'll clean them. Mr Yentop! <laughs> Esther, have you fallen asleep? Come on, girl, wake up. You've been in there two hours. <laughs> Look at the graffiti in here. Who'd have thought Maureen Lippin was into that? <laughs> Lily gets called breaking the rules and gets banished from BBC Television Centre at five past ten next Sunday night here on BBC One. Take a trip with the Comedy Zone, where strange creatures roam. He's looking at me all funny. <laughs> Witness bizarre mating rituals. <laughs> and primitive hunting techniques. Police warn fishermen to be on their guard after a local trout stream is contaminated with steroids. <laughs> Have a wild time this Friday from 9 on BBC Two. Monster, monster, monster. Row at ten on B. Welcome to an hour and a half of comedy from BBC Two with a far show just round the corner in half an hour after a bit of star spotting.